Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about general conditions across the Caribbean at the moment. And as you saw in the title, there is flooding or there was flooding occurring in sections of northeastern Jamaica. So I'm going to be sharing some clips with you uh, later down in this video of what it's been like uh, in parishes such as St. Anne and St. Mary. So uh, before I go into details, however... Okay, and so let us start off with a general view of the Caribbean. And we're seeing here that uh, we have quite a bit of moisture uh, as a result of the remnants of that cold front that brought some very low temperatures. So temperatures somewhat plummeted in sections of the Western Caribbean as that front made its way down. So even in Cuba, uh, I believe it's been quite a few decades since they've had temperatures so low i think at one point it was about eight or six degrees celsius that was pretty intense so uh those are the conditions that that cold front brought with it along with that rainfall the gusty winds at times and uh, fortunately we have it being dissipated right now but again we have that uh the remnants of it that are lingering in the basin and bringing some inclement weather to portions of the caribbean and so let us actually talk about what a cold front is because many persons they know the conditions that are associated with them like when you hear the word cold front the first thing that comes to mind is cool temperatures a uh, lot of rainfall windy conditions overcast skies which are the conditions uh, to expect however what exactly is it so a cold front isn't merely those conditions but it is a boundary uh, that is formed between warm and and cold air masses so when we have a warm and a cold air mass meeting each other what is going to be happening is that we're going to have the cold air sinking beneath the warm air and so the reason for that is because cold air is dense so we have the molecules being very tightly packed and so uh for that reason uh we have cold air being dense whereas with warm air the molecules are much freer to move around so that is why they rise above that uh, cold air and so cold air masses they're usually associated with areas of lower pressure meanwhile it's the opposite for warm air masses so when we have that warm air rising now uh, we think of the water cycle with this we're going to have condensation where we have the droplets cooling uh, and condensing to form clouds and then the next step is inevitably going to be precipitation so that is when uh, we have rain or it can be in the other forms such as snow, sleet or freezing rain as well or even hail. And we have all of that developing right at the boundary of that warm and cold air mass. So that is how we have the development of cold fronts. And so that is why we have impacts such as lower temperatures because uh, behind the frontal boundary, that's where you have the mass of cold air. So that cold air is going to be coming down. And then we have that rainfall as a result of the precipitation developing in the vicinity of that front. And we also can have windiness associated with it. So that is the basic understanding of what cold fronts are. So that is what happened and we have that front making its way down to the southeast and impacting the Caribbean and now we just have the remnants and all these cool temperatures are dissipating so things are starting to go back to normal. However, for the US the story isn't over. As a matter of fact, a lot of persons are probably in preparation mode as we have another impending winter storm. But before we go into that, let me share the clips with you of what is happening in Jamaica. All right, and so there you saw it. So things have not been uh, looking well in those parishes, but 
again, these conditions are not expected to be persistent and things should improve as time goes on. And so now let's go ahead and talk about that impending winter storm, winter storm Landon. So it is expected to bring some very serious impacts to portions of the U.S. We're talking about very heavy snowfall, uh, heavy rainfall, ice storms accompanying this uh, storm system here. And so this is going to be developing as we head into tomorrow. And so let's go ahead and see what our models are expecting. So we'll be looking at the GFS and the NAM models and see uh, what is the general agreement with them. All right, so this is by tomorrow on Wednesday, the 2nd of February. And we're seeing here that uh, we have... Uh this boundary is starting to develop. So we have the blue shades indicating snowfall, the purples indicating sleet, and the pink shade that you're seeing representing freezing rain, and the green is generally rainfall. So we're seeing here that we have this boundary starting to develop. So this frontal boundary, so similar to what I explained earlier, where we have a uh, that warm air rising above that cold air, uh, cooling, condensing, forming clouds, and then that is going to in turn lead to precipitation. And so as we head to Thursday, we're seeing that this thing here is extensive, uh, all the way going down into Texas and extended into portions of the northeastern U.S. And we see that right in the central portion, that is where we have most of the very impactful uh, precipitation as a result of this. We're talking about uh, sections of the U.S. such as Arkansas going into portions of Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, even going up more north. But everyone that is in all of these shaded areas right here are going to feel some impacts from this system here. As we head to Friday, we see that this thing here is drifting to the east and we mainly have that snowfall in portions of the uh, northeastern states of the U.S. and we have that freezing rain and sleet just in between uh, that moisture line where we see and then we have some severe thunderstorms though in portions of Alabama, Georgia going into portions of South uh, South and North Carolina there. But as we're going to be heading later into this weekend, we should have most of these uh, very significant impacts making their way out of the U.S. And so going on to the NAM model now. So we're seeing that by tomorrow we have the NAM showing that this is going to be developing. And all of this moisture, uh, warmth and moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico is really going to be the fuel for this winter storm here. So that is why we have all this precipitation developing because all of this energy is just fueling it. So think of this like uh, your vehicle, for example. It can't go on without having fuel. So whenever uh, your gas tank is full, that is when you can go very long distances. This is kind of the same scenario that's happening with this uh, winter storm here as we're seeing as it develops. So it's getting all that fuel from that energy coming in from the Gulf of Mexico, which is resulting in it being very extensive and powerful and then nam is showing it uh all of that mixed precipitation extended into texas and we have uh this frontal boundary extending all the way up into the northeast similar to what the gfs is anticipating so all in all uh most of these states of the south central and eastern u.s are going to be feeling some really uh, significant impacts as a result of landing as it is going to be developing starting about tomorrow so please guys if you're to be impacted take all the necessary precautions do not take any unnecessary risks and just stay as safe as possible and so that is really it for this update video and so if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be weatherwise